Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Xenogears. Last time we got here and I fell down. So this time we're not going to fall down. This is the Babel Tower. We've uh, been climbing here for a couple of episodes now. And battle time. After that very short fight, do note that right in behind here is a hidden treasure, gold bouillon, which is nice. That'll sell for some good money, which we are going to need. I know I've been saying throughout pretty much the whole game that uh, there's a serious lack of money in this game, and we haven't really seen that yet. However, in the upcoming area, we will most definitely see the benefits of all the saving and all of the penny pinching that I've done the entire game. Now, if you stay on here while it goes down, you will go back to the previous screen. You do not want to do that. Uh, let's see. Let's pop up here. Now, you can kind of see on the, on the far left there, there's a treasure hidden behind this uh, pillar as well. You have to have the right camera angle in order to really see that properly. And we get some more ammo there that I probably won't use because I don't have Billy in my party right now. Now, you want to take the upper path here first. And the reason for that is hidden treasure. And for whatever reason, there doesn't seem to be any uh, texture on this part of the area. I don't know why. You see that little square down there? Probably should have it, but it doesn't. I can see why the back does, because you're kind of seeing through the wall, but it doesn't seem to matter what angle you have. You miss out on that one there. Now, do note uh, over in the top right there, we have another one of those things there. That'll be important shortly. Now, let's drop down here. And we've got another one of these here. And this one will take us, ooh, almost just on the edge there, take us up uh, far enough here so that we can uh, move forward. Ah, there's some more treasure there. We should probably pick that one up. There we go. Now, you probably don't want to try for that jump. Let's try for that one. And then we'll slide down here, down there. And we get Water Veal AR. I think that's the last one, if I remember correctly. Now, remember that one that I pointed out before that was kind of... You can't see it from any camera angle around here, unfortunately. But you can't make that jump. So just walk off the edge and kind of fall to the middle uh, in between those two. Is that like pillars or platforms or whatever they are. Anyway, once we get over there, we should be able to do some jumping to get through all this. And once we're through that battle, all we have to do is get over here, and this automatically will initiate, giving us the option to climb up to the next uh, part of the area there. Too bad there wasn't one of those before, considering they're in gears. At least they wouldn't, pr at least I would assume, get tired uh, from climbing, you know, a long way up here. Though, I really wish that elevator would have worked a lot better than it did and not only get us halfway up. But now's probably a good time to make a little bit of a backup save. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. All right. All saved up and ready to go. But of course, because there's a save point, we also have to be able to do something right after. It's either a boss fight or a cutscene after a save point. Pretty much all the time. And we're at the top, but I guess Shiva's not here. We were supposed to find a way to signal them so that uh, some huge thing. Yeah, we should look for that comm equipment. We're trying to contact Shiva. We didn't really expect them to be here. And what is that? Um, Didn't Jesse say something about Shiva and the mysterious girl and a large gear? Who wants to bet we know who this is already? Anyway... This is Siebzen, or Seibzen. Uh, it's German. Uh, if I remember correctly, it means 17. Uh, that will become important a little bit later, and I'll talk about it very briefly, because there really isn't much to it. But it, it's kind of interesting, and it would, re will relate to something else later on that I will also hopefully remember to bring up. You want to have boss time. Yes. Uh, nothing particularly uh, interesting as far as setup goes for this boss fight. Um, Sibzen does have crappy ether defense if you brought Ellie, so load her up with power magic, E-Circuits, and Ether Doubler, and unleash air rods. Uh, let's see, I'm going to start off the battle with booster on everyone, because it is really the best way to go. 
having lots of magnetic coats for this fight makes it a cakewalk. And as soon as we get uh, those up, we want to hit Yin Power. That's going to be pretty much standard for pretty much any boss fight at this point. Uh, any t anything we can do to increase our damage is very helpful. And you are going to use Wild Smile to increase our evasion and some more. And make it so we don't miss. That'll help. And then we're just going to start uh, hammering on her. Now, Saibzen only has 6,000 HP, so as you can see, even though we're not doing a whole bunch of damage right now, it's really not going to take us all that long to end this fight. But Saibzen's not particularly fast, so boosters really helps to exploit that weakness. But yeah, so let's uh, basically just go for basic combos. Um, as you can see, 6,000, we've already done 2,000, she's third dead, so I wouldn't worry too much about uh, much with this fight. If this is the best that, uh, yeah, woo, 400, wow. If this is the best that uh, Shiva has to offer, I don't think they stand much of a chance against Solaris. Or anyone else, for that matter. Are you dead yet? If you save up for double con combos, it uh, like uh, square combos, so you hit the square button first instead of the triangle button. Yeah, it's not. Uh, you know, it, you'll end up killing her before you go through your entire round of unleashing those combos because they do like 2,500 each. But anyway, that's pretty much all there is to that. And I got nice level up boosts on that one. Very nice. Not so nice for you. Now, I've heard, there is uh, drops that are not guaranteed. Um, I think it's an ether armor plus one and a heavy alloy. I think heavy alloy is just increased defense, though I can't remember off the top of my head. Either way, I wouldn't worry about them. I'm not going to use either option. And ether plus one, maybe, but by the time I need them, I can get them somewhere else. So Anyway, Queen Zephyr. Apparently, we are now going to be let in, even though we were just attacked. And yes, this is that weird flying saucer that we saw before. Now we're seeing it up close a little bit. It's starting to look a little less like a flying... S well, no, it's still a flying saucer, but... I guess it's not quite so strange now, maybe? It's still weird looking. Anyway, is it landing? Or is it just going to hover above the tower? Aerial City of Shiva. I think letting that music play out is kind of helpful. I, I like the angelic choir music for this city that's floating in the sky. I think that's uh, a very good choice on the game designer's part. Way to go, Uma or, uh, not Umatsu, uh, Mitsuda. I'm so used to saying that because he's worked on so many games. Oh, so you weren't really trying all that hard. That would probably help explain a few things, because you really aren't that powerful, little one. Anyway, with that being said, we now get magical warping power to into Shivat. But first, let's do cutscenes, I guess. Anyway, um, these guys, the Gazelle Ministry, they're talking about... Um, I would guess the Gibbler forces, specifically Ramses, who attacked us on our way up the tower. There is an Anima Relic in Shivat. We don't know much about these Anima Relics and what they do yet, but uh, once we finally get a basic understanding of it, uh, and that's revealed in the game, then I'll go and explain more about the, their purpose and what they are a reference to. What do you mean, your type? I think I know what they're talking about. I'm not 100% sure, though. What of the Animus? Yes, we've heard about the Anima Relics and the Animus. Now, again, like I said, 
these kind of go hand in hand, so we'll be talking about them in due time. Oh, so yeah, we kind of heard about this as well, I think from Ellie, that Shivot has a gate very similar to the ones uh, that protects Solaris, and Solaris can't get into Shivot's gate, or vice versa. And uh, that word, then I don't know how to pronounce that. It's also German. I think it's either 16 or 18. It's it's comparable to... It's a, it's another one like uh, Seiten. So maybe it's Axen or something like that. I don't know. I never learned German in uh, high school or beyond. Anyway, if they're wondering if this thing, this 16 or 18, I think it's 18, if it is uh, uh, operational or not. Why would you need to re-educate something? Considering it's also a number, I'm assuming it's another gear, like Sidezen, right? What do you mean, side effects? What are you guys talking about? Anyway, let's leave that alone for now. That's just not helping matters and making things a little more confusing. Anyway, this is the dock, the lowest layer of Shivat. This is Maria Balthazar. Now, I can't remember, Balthazar was one of the three gurus that, uh, uh, the three wise men, depending on different translations in the Bible, that went to see little uh, baby Jesus at, uh, at his birth. And they're also referred to someone else we've known by that name. The crazy old man playing with old gears underground Ave. Yes, old man Bal, the hermit. Now, yeah, uh, Calamity, the boss we fought way down there, that was actually Bal's gear. Old man Balthazar. Yeah, kind of have a good idea of uh, the relationship there. Yeah, so... The Calamity was the boss we fought. It was actually Balthazar's gear. And I, at the time, I could not remember that from what I'm thinking now. I, I think I was confused at where that came from, if it was just like a guard or something like that. But I guess he was that annoyed by us from uh, when we talked about, I think it was Welltall and certain things that we said we really pissed him off and then he didn't really want to deal with us anymore and he wouldn't talk to us. Uh, we could still heal up our gears, but that was about it. But uh, yeah, so we ended up fighting that gear. Anyway, that is the prototype for the gear her grandfather made. He's in the bottom of a cave, twiddling his thumbs, looking at skulls. Kind of creepy, actually. Yes, the granddaughter of old man Balthazar, who apparently is like Cher or Satan. He only has one name. He doesn't have two names. He's known as Balthazar, even though, based on what we know about Maria, since that's her last name, that would be his last name as well. I don't think he ever has a first name. He's always referred to as either old man Bal or Balthazar. Yeah, she's a little young herself. Uh, it's hard to tell with the size of the sprites, but she's supposed to be, like, I think under 12. So the fact that she hasn't seen him in many years says that she has some pretty early memories, because she hasn't been alive for that long. You know, to begin with, eh? Anyway, enough babbling. The crazy... Yeah. <laughs> Never dies. Don't worry, Squirt. <laughs> um, he really is a crazy old man. He's a smart, crazy old man, but uh, crazy nonetheless. Crazy is not necessarily bad, but... And as we can see, Bart is continuing his kind of arc like he had his original arc earlier in the game and now 
we're kind of just evolving the game as we're going forward. We've had his arc, we've had Rico's arc, and we've also had Billy's arc now. Billy's arc has pretty much ended. We're on the uh, the next arc here. And this one is quite a bit shorter than most of the other ones. So uh, let's, uh, we'll, as we go forward, we'll find out uh, who is the kind of the focus of this arc. But uh, throughout pretty much all of them, Bart has been growing and maturing as both a character and, you know, as a, as a person, right? It's uh, nice to see him growing up, considering he was this brash young kid at the start of the game, and he really has matured over the time that uh, he's been traveling with Faye. Queen Zephyr. I forgot to uh, get out uh, my, my name dictionary thing there and uh, find out what her name is a reference to. Marie's as well. You know, the obvious Balthazar reference I could remember off the top of my head, but uh, I'll see if Maria has any specific uh, notes on her first name there, as well as the uh, queen. Okay. Anyway, we should take a look around town. That is a great idea because there is a lot we can do here. And can I, uh, can I move now? Nope. Sure thing. <laughs> this is a great idea. We create our own army. I'm sure that would be uh, a great help in uh, Bart regaining his kingdom. Anyway, if we follow uh, Maria there, go through a rather dark hallway, and we get kind of a look around here. Can I talk to you? Well matched. We dominated her. Ah, so they seem to be an opposing uh, Solaris as well. And if you sit there and talk to Maria, we get a, uh, a little extra dialogue and sad kind of retrospective music, if I can speak anyway. Now, I was gonna, I just let the music play out there because it's one of my favorite songs in the entire game. But to kind of clarify things in relation to what we've already known, if you remember, Jesse was saying that uh, someone was working on a gear in Solaris, a scientist, and then he sent his daughter away with the prototype. So his, uh, we, I think uh, the Shivat uh, survivor from. Uh, down in the Ethos headquarters mentioned that the father's name was Nikolai. So Dr. Nikolai Balthazar was this character that was her father that sent her away and had was basically kidnapped by Solaris. And she was kidnapped as well. And in order to protect her, he sent her away with one of the prototypes, Saibzen, in order to you know make sure that she wasn't going to get hurt. So apparently they were both trying to escape. She fell behind and he helped her get away at the cost of his own freedom. Basically, she's losing her memories of him. Very determined for uh, such a young child. Then again, we've seen a lot of determined children in this game. Billy, uh, Maria now, uh, Bart, you know, you gotta acknowledge him even though he's a little older than the other two. 
No, it was a great story, and it had great accompanying music. And it'll play, I think, the rest of the time that we're in here. Oh, so they don't really know anything. And do simple repairs, so hopefully it doesn't get uh, too badly hurt. Oh, and they're going to look at our gears. That's nice. No doubt. Anyway, with uh, that being said, it's time to explore the city. Now, the city is not particularly large, but still confusing. Uh, again, this comes down to the... Uh, there's the, the gate there. Just take that off. But uh, this kind of relates to... I don't know, just the, the bad isometric kind of perspective and the horrible 3D that this game employs and the lack of a minimap. Really, uh, so many of the problems could have been fixed with a minimap. Anyway, if you see this, this is the entrance to the palace, even though it doesn't really look like anything special. It's just a statue, but apparently that is the palace. Uh, this is the old capital of Shivad, Afel Ora, and I don't know what that references either. Again, I'll look at it after this episode and before I make the next one. And this is back to where we just came from. So what you want to do is you want to find the statue there, run across here, hit the X button, and we get a Dawn Rock. This, uh, unlike Chrono Trigger, does not invoke a triple tech. What this does is it gives us access to a little mini side quest, which is very worthwhile. Anyway, that's pretty much all the time I have for this episode, so next time we will be heading through the city, collecting treasure, upgrading our equipment, and running very low on money. That's all for this one, and I'll see you guys next time!